it's a huge job. Uh, I'm not going to build uh, 500,000 bridges, but uh, I'm going to sure give it my best go. Sabara Dildi really represents, I think, what a bridge can provide for a community or a series of communities or a region. For centuries, the Sabara Dildi footbridge across the Blue Nile has been a lifeline for Amhara Highlanders. There are um, close to a half a million people on either side of this river, and if you know, as Americans, we just can't imagine um, having that kind of population and having no connection. Sabara Dildi means broken bridge in Amharic. For decades, the only way to cross this section of the Blue Nile in Ethiopia was to be pulled across the broken span on worn out rope, dangling above the dangerous current. Built nearly 400 years ago, Sabara Dildi sustained a trade between the Arab world and Ethiopia. But in the 1930s, Sabara Dildi was intentionally destroyed to slow Mussolini's forces, creating a dangerous gap that isolated Gondor province from neighboring Gojam. Shaken and inspired by a picture of the broken bridge in National Geographic, Ken France created Bridges to Prosperity with Sabara Dildi as the first project. I realized that it wasn't uh, just a need for one bridge in one place, but it was a worldwide need. Bridges to Prosperity has helped build 60 bridges on four continents, a poverty reduction method that is sustainable, scalable, and efficient. A 100-meter cable suspended bridge can be built for less than $30,000, one quarter the cost of a conventional bridge. In 2009, with the help of area masons, porters, and donors, Bridges to Prosperity completed the new bridge over the Blue Nile. Zoe Pacciani has been with Bridges to Prosperity since its inception. She organized the transport of construction material to the Blue Nile site, 15 miles from the nearest road. Teams of men carried six cables, each as long as a football field and each weighing a ton. Men and mules also transported eight tons of cement, thousands of feet of steel rebar, and every winch, wrench, and hammer. One of the greatest challenges, obviously, is the remoteness of this bridge. We're talking over a thousand people coming down this hill. The most important thing is getting the community involved, and they have to be involved from the very beginning. If they're not involved from the very beginning, the entire project is very difficult. It's really, it's their bridge. This bridge links villagers with medical care and the market town of Mota. The nearest crossing is nearly a week's walk away. One young woman who couldn't get to medical care because of the broken bridge was Bun Chamlik. As a little girl, she was burned so badly that her arm fused to her torso. Her recovery is a remarkable testimony to the importance of this bridge. To get to the nurses and doctors who could help her, she had to walk 10 miles from her village to the river and another 10 hours walking and driving to get to a medical facility. Without several temporary bridges put in place by Bridges to Prosperity, Banchamlik and thousands of villagers like her who need medical care would have little chance to get the help they need. My name is Ban Chamlik. Now I can do what other people can do because my left hand is okay and I feel okay now. I would like to be a doctor and help people who have problems like I did. How can I tell you the change? It's really amazing and unbelievable. I'm really happy that she got treatment and she can do anything now. Thanks to Bridges to Prosperity and a local Rotary Club, Ban Chamlik is now enrolled in university. So this is to help you type reports in your school and get really good grades. And uh, I'd love to see you be a doctor. Villagers and local officials provided support at every stage, paving the way for increased trade and economic growth in the region. We are happy that the foreigners have come down here to build the new bridge, and every single body is happy. This bridge is important. It gives access to both sides of the community to market their products, to uh, transport their agricultural inputs. Wonder.
I am really happy to see the new bridge. We can cross and contact with the other part of the province, Gondar and Gojam region. The community bridge building program demonstrates how knowledge and training can fuel positive change. This dinga rocks are the premise of all of our, our masonry work. Civil engineer Avery Bang shares blueprints and bridge building skills as part of Bridges to Prosperity's mission to train local engineers and laborers. The bridge is um, incredibly simple. Everything that you need, you could build without an engineering degree. <laughs> Volunteers from the U.S. worked side by side with their Ethiopian counterparts. I guess I'm carrying rocks once in a while. <laughs> Whatever they need, a little carpentry, a little metal bending, a little logistics. We wanted to give them a, a safe way back and forth. There's very few tools here. Um, you don't have everything you need. The finished bridge ushers in a new era for the region. I am really happy for the bridge's uh, maintenance. Keen is our hero. Uh, I will say just blessing for every one of them. I call this my homecoming trip. It's really coming back to uh, give the people a permanent way to cross the Blue Nile River safely. Uh, for me, this has been, you know, the most amazing experience um, I've ever had. Seeing the need, supplying the knowledge, building connections. Bridges to Prosperity continues to change lives, one bridge at a time.